According to Alice Park, a senior writer for Time magazine, 0.5% of children are not vaccinated for medical reasons, and 2-3% to of children are not vaccinated for non-medical reasons. While this may seem like a very small amount of children, Alice Park explains that this number is only growing. A few years ago, the, the debate about vaccinations was sparked, and it has continued on to this day. We have one side of people who think that vaccinations are dangerous and could cause complications and other disabilities to their children, and then the other side is made up of people, including doctors and experts, who explain that the consequences of not vaccinating your children are much higher and more far-reaching than any risks associated with vaccinating them. So as this debate is becoming more relevant in society, I urge you to think about the consequences of not vaccinating your children and how far-reaching these effects may be. Firstly, vaccines do not cause autism. Secondly, and most importantly, they have eradicated many fatal diseases that have caused deaths in the past. And thirdly, vaccines are important for keeping not only the single child healthy, but also the whole society healthy. So this debate about vaccinations was sparked a few years ago when an article that claimed that vaccinations could cause autism was published. Since then, this claim has been disproved. The research that was involved in this article was found to be faulty. It was conducted badly and portrayed badly. And there have also been studies to show that there is no association between autism and vaccinations. Specifically, a study conducted at the University of Sydney in Australia was conducted with more than 1.2 million children, and it showed that there was no association between autism and vaccinations. So this claim that autism could be caused by vaccinations is officially disproved. Even if autism was possibly caused by vaccinations, we have to think about which is worse, having a child with a fatal disease or with autism. Autism doesn't affect the life expectancy of a child. In fact, according to the National Autism Association, the life expectancy itself isn't affected, but they may be more likely to die just because of accidents such as drowning. Whereas with a fatal disease, the life expectancy is definitely affected in, in a lot of cases. And there's a lot of pain and suffering involved with fatal diseases. For example, with diphtheria, one out of 10 people will die even if they were treated, and one out of two people will die if they were not treated. So it's, it looks much better to have a child with autism than with a fatal disease. Secondly, and most importantly, vaccinations have eradicated and taken control of a lot of the diseases that caused millions of deaths in the past. According to UNICEF.org, it's taken control of diseases such as whooping cough, diphtheria, polio, neonatal tetanus, among others, and it has eradicated smallpox. So I wanted to show you this visual aid to it's a chart with different diseases and how they've been affected by vaccinations. It's a little hard to see, I'm sorry. So as you can see, the first row shows smallpox and how before vaccinations it caused 5 million deaths, but now it has not caused any deaths and it is 100% prevented. And then as you go down the list, you just see that there are different diseases that have been prevented and the deaths before the vaccinations, the deaths and occurrences after them, and it just kind of shows you how vaccinations have affected these diseases as a whole. So. Because vaccinations have been able to take control or eradicate some of these diseases, it has they have virtually eliminated the risk of children dying from these diseases, which is really great because these diseases used to account for 20% of the child mortality rate in the US. And thirdly and lastly, but not least, vaccinations keep not only the child safe, but also society as a whole safe. It has been found in a study by Bartoszewska, Patel, and Carter Blancs that when in a mixed group, children who are not immunized can transmit the disease to children who are vaccinated. So even if your children are vaccinated or you don't vaccinate your children and you think it'll only affect them, you can actually have the potential to affect children around them or people around them who are vaccinated. I think this can be seen, this widespread effect can be seen in the recent outbreaks of measles in the US. Um, up until recently, measles had been pretty contained. There weren't a lot of cases of measles, but now there have been cases like at Disneyland or in some small towns in the US, and doctors and experts explain that this is probably likely due to the parents rejecting to vaccinate their children because they might go overseas and catch the diseases and then they can bring them back and transmit it to people who have been vaccinated, um, but they can be vaccinated, they can be transmitted to people who are vaccinated still. And also, in a study that is published in the Journal of American Medical Association, 
the researchers found that that the children who were involved in these measles outbreaks cases were usually ones who were not vaccinated. So it does definitely increase the risk not only for the child themselves who are not vaccinated, but also for the people around them who are vaccinated. So I hope that this speech and these points have got you thinking a little bit about the consequences of not vaccinating your children. Remember that vaccinations do not cause autism if that is something that you were ever worried about. And vaccinations have really taken care of some of the diseases that caused a lot of pain, suffering, and deaths in the past. And vaccinations keep the society as a whole healthy, so they affect all of society. I wanted to leave you with this question. How would you feel if you could be a potential reason for the reintroduction of diseases in society that were fatal? And this is a really serious question, and it sounds a little bit exaggerated, but because of the far-reaching effects of not vaccinating your children, it is a valid question. Thank you.